I was young and fresh out of high school. I needed work, so I sent in resumes to all sort of entry-level positions. I got a few responses. I settled on McDonald's because it was an easy commute. Plus, the employee discount was pretty cool. The only position they had was a night shift, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. I'm fine with that because I was already a night owl. The first few days working there were fine. I wasn't working the counter or anything, just doing back-end stuff and cleanup. Our building was in a little strip mall off a highway exit. It's the only place there that's open at night, but we get a decent amount of customers, most of which go through the drive through on the Friday of my second week working there, or maybe it was a really early Saturday morning at that point, I'm not sure. It was just late. I remember I was grabbing the stacked trays from the lobby when someone walked in through the doors. It was a woman. She was really tall and pretty, made up super fancy in a long dress with high heels. She was wearing a big hat too. Eccentric, not your average McDonald's customer but what was weird was that I never saw a car pull up. We have a full view of the parking lot from the window, but no car ever dropped her off. She must have walked here. I smiled at her as I walked by and headed behind the counter. I bent down to restack the trays below, expecting my coworker standing at the register to serve her. He didn't say anything though, and after I'd finished, I stood up to find out why the girl wasn't ordering anything. But she wasn't there when I looked up. I never heard the door open. She was just gone. I asked the guy on the till where the girl went, and he replied, Who? I said the girl with the hat, and he just looked at me like I was dumb, telling me he had no clue who I was talking about. So I tried to rationalize it, deciding she had probably stepped in the door, took a look at our grubby menu, and left. But something was weird about the whole thing. It didn't really make sense why someone who looked and dressed like that would be at a random McDonald's in the middle of the night. Whatever. The shift went on normally for the next hour. Then I remember taking a break after cleaning the toilets. I sat down on a chair in the back near the kitchen when I heard heels clicking on the floor. It was quite audible, louder than if someone was just walking. It sounded like stomping, sort of. So I peer out into the lobby. My coworker was gone from the front. I figured he went to take his break. But you know who I do see? That same woman. Only this time someone was with her. A man. He wore a tuxedo with fancy black shoes. They were dancing together. Like full-on ballroom dancing in the lobby. Swinging back and forth, it was the most bizarre thing I'd ever seen. I remember watching them for a bit, mesmerized, before I took my place behind the register. I said something along the lines of, uh, can I help you? They both looked at me at the same time. As they stared, I felt a hand grab my shoulder with a firm grip. Instinctually, I turned around no one was there. I knew someone had touched me, but there wasn't anyone, so I spun back to the lobby where the people were to find them both gone. The man and the woman had just vanished. Once again, I didn't hear doors open or close. I didn't hear their fancy shoes skid on the floor. They were just there one minute and gone the next. For the rest of the night, only a few small things happened. At one point, I walked by the washrooms on my way to do something, to find both doors swinging, the male and female ones, like someone had just crashed through both of them. A little while later, I remember looking for something on the shelves in the back near the employee entrance, and something banged on the door, hard. Something heavy hit it, and only once. I remember opening it, looking around, and seeing no one. After that, the shift was regular. Really not much to say. 
I was really happy when I finally got off, though. The first bits of sunlight had just begun to come over the horizon as I left for my car. I was punching out ten minutes before I was supposed to, but I didn't think the people coming in would care. As I hit the parking lot, though, I see a car. It looked like a small limousine. It was just sitting there in front of the restaurant. Through the light from the street lamp, I could make out the doors opening. Two people got out, one on each side of the car. It was the man and the woman I'd seen before. The same people that were dancing. Only their appearance had changed. Their clothes seemed torn and ragged. I could see the woman's dress clearly because it was white. It was covered in dirt with holes and tears. And their faces. Their faces were terrifying. Their skin was bleach white. And their eyes, which were previously normal, were this beady black, like oversized bugs were looking at me. I stood there, frozen as I looked at them. Then the man spoke in a deep, filtered voice that seemed to echo from all around me. Would you like a ride? We have room for one more. Shaking my head was all I could muster. Without another word, the two people, if you can call them that, got into their car, shut the doors, and pulled away. None of their lights were on. I watched wide-eyed as the limo drove down the road before disappearing into the darkness of the early morning. Back in the late 90s, I used to have a serious drug problem. I was living in Las Vegas at the time, and after snorting my entire stash of coke, I would party, pass out, wake up, jack some cars, sell them, spend some money on food, and the rest would go to my dealer, and then I would snort again and repeat the entire process. One night in July, I broke into a panel van without windows. It was parked alone outside of a rat-infested motel. My gut told me that I should check the back before I drove away, but my mind was on my next fix, and I just floored it as soon as I got the engine started. I drove about an hour away into an isolated area of the desert, where I would meet my contact, who would check out the car, pay me in cash, and then drop me off at the nearest street corner. Once I put the van in park, I decided to check out the back. I figured there might be some tools or something back there that I could pawn for more cash. The back of the van was padlocked shut, which should have been my first clue, because when I smashed it open with my crowbar, I heard a high-pitched wailing from inside. I turned on my flashlight, and my stomach dropped. Four Hispanic children, two boys and two girls, were tied up and gagged, lying on a handful of filthy cushions. They were all in tears and staring at me in absolute horror. I dropped the crowbar and backed away from the van a few steps. This was bad. Really fucking bad. I didn't know what to do. I had clearly stolen the van from a kidnapper or a human trafficker, and they would be looking to recover it, and likely shoot the asshole who took it from them. I decided not to call my contact. I knew him pretty well, and I was fairly certain that he would either kill the kids and dump their bodies in the desert, or shoot me for fucking this up. I made a snap decision. I climbed in the van and explained to them in both English and what Spanish I knew that I wasn't going to hurt them. I gagged them and cut the bonds around their wrists, but I left their ankles tied. I couldn't risk them running off. I felt sick to my stomach with heartbroken guilt when I saw the welts around their hands. The stench of urine and sweat was heavy in the air. I climbed back in the driver's seat, drove back out of the desert, and at the first service stop I pulled in and parked. I went inside and bought four bottles of water and as many bags of snacks that I could afford. I carefully opened the back of the van and tossed the bag inside. Then I closed it again and walked across the lot. I made an anonymous phone call to the police from a payphone and then walked to the next service station where I had a friend come pick me up. 
After that night, I had my friend buy me a bus ticket to Texas, where I had an older brother who would let me stay on his couch. I got clean, and I ultimately turned my life around. I got an honest job, and I now have my own family and my own home. I remember being so relieved when I heard on the news that the kids had been found and were returned to their families in Mexico. You never know when life will give you a test like that and a chance to prove your character. I like to think that those kids helped me as much as I helped them.